Today, we're going to go ahead and take a look at activity 1.5, decision time. Now, in our previous activity, we learned a little bit about conditional statements. Now that we've learned a little bit about how to write algorithms with conditional statements, we're going to go ahead and finish our activity 1.5, the germ guide app. Now, as we work to develop our app, you are going to practice using flowcharts to represent algorithms and use conditional statements to allow your app to make choices for you. So right now, if we take a look at our app's current behavior, if we were to go ahead and touch the measles button on the crowding screen of our device, it should play the measles MP3 player. Now, if we go ahead and touch that same button again, what we would like to see is that it actually pauses that MP3. However, if we go ahead and hit it, we're gonna notice that nothing actually happens. The MP3 just continues to play until it finishes. So we don't have a conditional statement in there that's really telling it what to do. So if we look at the blocks that we've used in our blocks editor, what we're gonna notice we have is basically, if you press the measles button, we're gonna call the measles player to play. And that's it. There's nothing there. There's no condition telling us if it's playing, when it's playing, we just have it playing. So we need to make some choices or make decisions in order to get our app to function correctly. So in order to get our apps to make decisions for us, what we're gonna need to do is basically pause the audio files that we programmed into the germ guide app activity. We need to be able to add these conditional statements in order to get it to do what we want it to do. We call that making a decision. So the app needs to determine whether the audio is playing or not. Then it will respond appropriately. You need to add conditional statements to your program to help it perform this functionality. Now in App Inventor, you can specify conditional behaviors with either if or if else blocks. These are found in the control drawer of the built-in palette. The if block uses what we call Boolean logic to test a given condition. If the condition is true, the app then performs the actions in the then sequence of the block. If the condition is false, then the blocks are ignored. The if else block also uses Boolean logic to test a given condition. If the condition is true, the app performs the actions in the then sequence of the blocks. If the condition is false, however, the app then performs the actions in the else sequence of the blocks. So here we can have basically one condition with two different outcomes. So how do we actually determine the behavior or the conditional behavior of our app? Let's go ahead and take a closer look at how we can determine the conditional behavior. The app needs to determine whether to play or pause the measles audio file when a user touches a button. So we're gonna use a flow chart here to map out our measles button event handler. Right now we have when the measles button is clicked, we're calling the measles player to start. But now we wanna ask ourselves a question and that question is, is the measles player playing? So we have two options here, either yes or no. If it is playing, then we want something to happen. If it's not playing, then something else should happen. Because we have one condition and two possible outcomes, we're gonna need to then go ahead and use that if then else block. So let's go ahead through this flowchart and see if we can figure out what the then and else statements are. When the measles button is clicked, is the measles player playing? If we answer yes to that question, then we wanna go ahead and call the measles player to pause. Since the player is already playing, if we click it a second time, that MP3 file should then pause. But what if we go ahead and click that button and we ask that same question, is the measles player playing? And our answer to that question is no. In that case, we really want two different things to possibly happen. The first thing we want to have happen is we want to call the measles player to start. So again, if it's not playing and we click the button, we want it to play. However, we do have to keep in mind that we have a second event handler in the program, and that's that meningitis button. So what happens if the meningitis button was already playing and then we went ahead and clicked the measles button? Now you can have possibly two MP3s trying to compete to see which one is gonna play. 
So we can go ahead and add in that L statement, not only to start the measles player, but we want to call the meningitis player to stop. So if we look at the code for this actual behavior, you're going to notice that we're going to create an if then else block. And we're going to say, if the measles player is playing, call the measles player to pause. The else portion of this is calling the measles player to start and then to go ahead and stop the meningitis player. So now let's go ahead and take a look at our MIT App Inventor block view and go ahead and program both the measles and meningitis button. Once you've opened MIT App Inventor, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you navigate to my projects where this will bring you to your splash screen. Here you'll find any apps that you've previously uploaded to MIT App Inventor. We're gonna go ahead and continue with our A13 Germ Guide app. So once you've completed the basic programming for your water, vector, and crowding screens, we can simply go ahead and just modify that code. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and open up the Germ Guide app and once that app opens up, we're gonna go up to connect and we're gonna connect that to our Chromebook. The next thing we'll wanna do is go ahead and navigate to our crowding screen. So we're gonna select screen one, go to your crowding screen, and that will bring us into our measles and meningitis. From here, we're gonna to need to go ahead and navigate to the block view. So as in our previous activity, what we've gone ahead and done is we have our back press for our crowding screen as well as the back button. But the two event handlers we need to modify here is the measles and the meningitis. So we're gonna need to go ahead and pull these call start blocks out. And what we're gonna go ahead and do is add that conditional statement. We could add the conditional statements by going to our control structure and finding the if then else blocks. And you can bring that in and right click and select duplicate and drag that over to the meningitis as well. So the next thing we need to do is add the condition. And our first condition or question that's being asked is if the measles player is playing. So in my block view, I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down and we want to find the measles player. And with that measles player, we're gonna find that green block that says is the measles playing and drop it in. Now you can do the same thing by right clicking and duplicating and change that measles player by clicking inside and just changing it to meningitis. So now we are able to create our meningitis condition as well. So now that we have both of those event handlers, the next step is to go and create the then statement. Your then statement basically means when the measles is clicked and if it is playing, we want it to go ahead and pause. So right now we have these starts. We're gonna go back to the measles player and instead of calling a start, let's call a pause. We can drop that measles player to pause, again, duplicate, change the player to meningitis and drop that into our then statement for the meningitis button. Now we can ask ourselves that same question, which is the no, is the measles player playing? If the answer to that is no, then we want the measles player to play. We can drag that meningitis up as well into the else statement. And then we have one more condition we're gonna go ahead and add. We're gonna go back to that measles player and we're gonna find the measles player to stop. Now be careful when adding this block because we don't want the measles player to stop in the measles button clicked because then we would be saying, hey, we want you to start, then stop. What we want to have happen here is we want the measles player to stop if the meningitis player is playing. Again, duplicate, make sure you change that measles over to meningitis and then go ahead and drop that into your measles button. Now, before moving on to our next screen, we're gonna go ahead and take one of our event handlers and drag it into that backpack. Once you drop it into that backpack, we're gonna be able to use that on another screen. So let's go take a look at our crowding screen. We'll switch it over to the vector screen. And from here, we're gonna go ahead and make some modifications. So again, I'm just gonna go ahead and take these event handlers that I've already created, and I'm gonna put them in my trash. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I can go ahead and click on that backpack, and I'm gonna bring that whole event handler in. Now, the problem with this is you're gonna notice that I have plenty of red X's, and the reason for that is because I'm no longer working with the meningitis, I'm now working with malaria and dengue fever. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch my meningitis. Let's go ahead and do malaria. So when the malaria button is clicked, we wanna call the malaria player to play. 
we want to call the malaria or the malaria player to pause. We want to call the malaria player to start. And then this one at the bottom, we want the dengue fever to stop. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and right click and duplicate, bring that second event handler in, and we're going to switch everything around. Malaria now becomes dengue fever. And my dengue fever down at the bottom is now my malaria. Now you're going to need to do this one more time on your water screen, and then you've completed your app. But if we test our app now, what should happen is if I click malaria and it plays, if I click it a second time, we should get it to pause. Malaria is an infection caused by a plasmodium parasite that's transmitted. And there you have the pause. So that's the if statement. The malaria button was pressed. It was playing. I pressed it again and it was paused. Now, what happens if I play it again? By mosquitoes. People can contract malaria in hot tropical. Stop it again. Notice that now it picks up right where I paused it. Now that you've created two of your screens, you're going to want to go ahead and modify that water screen so that the conditions meet what the expected expectations of the app are. Go ahead and play around with the buttons to see how it works and see if you can find any additional bugs.